I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Love Beast Wars 2, conceptually. I think it's a great idea. It's basically anime Beast Wars, and yeah. that's amazing. Um, but there's a thing. There were two characters who were, like, basically on the moon, and it was a bunny named Moon... Okay. And a girl named Artemis. Okay. Right? They were basically, like, explaining everything that was happening. Yeah. Um, and Artemis has never gotten an action figure. But she's getting one in Leo Convoy. And okay. And I'm kind of excited about that. Are you getting it? I was already, I was already gonna get Leo Convoy. Okay. Like... What do you think this is? Who do you think I am? I have. That's a why. Why should I even ask? <laughs> you shouldn't have asked. I feel. I feel slightly offended. But. <laughs> As you should be. You should. Be. <laughs> I should uh, be. Yeah. I have the right. Yeah. To party as well. Yeah, the right to party, man. Oh God. Oh, just as a, a heads up. Yeah. The um. So we're thinking. Early afternoon, like one or whatever, for the Fourth of July yeah. party. Okay, this is gonna be yeah, yeah. Giant Jenga. I got a slip and slide from Whammo. Why did you get a slip and slide? Cause it was from Whammo. Do you, you remember Whammo? I remember Whammo. Okay, yeah. So it's like they have those why, Super Bowls. Is this sort her of like what shit pe- that I think that normal humans would do during the summer? Oh, okay. So it's just like, I get it. Oh, so I, get I think what you normal do. humans get like they get like horseshoes. So I got horseshoes. I'm getting bad. Ma- it's just things that I think that a normie would get, right? A normie. Yeah. Oh, God. Why Why are you trying to be a normie? Why are you trying to be a normal? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've seen most of the... I've seen the guest list of this party. You... Not a... Not a single normie. Not a single not normal a person single in normal that person. guest list. <laughs> Brandon. Brandon, that slip and slide is going to be dry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no. I th- well, actually, I can no, think of no. a few people. I can think. So I know just for shits and giggles. I know I, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I can. 100% I know. Percent done. Like Nick's gonna do it. Yeah, Falco's gonna do it too. Yeah. No, they're, they're, yeah. They're, it's gonna get at least uh, a modicum. Of it's use. gonna get. It's gonna get at least three uses. A minimum of three uses and of the orientation because it could be potentially dangerous. Well, it's a slip and slide. They're they're yeah. like by definition dangerous. Yeah. So so it, it's gonna. There's a specific spot where it cannot go and it cannot face, so it's not going to be there because it can't face the clothesline and it can't go over the part of my yard where there's like a big dip and then it goes back up. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> no, it definitely can. No, do it explicitly that. goes there now, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of has to. Yeah. <laughs> it, and then you buy a kiddie pool for the other side. Yeah. That, and it's a game. That, now it's a game. That was taken off the list because like, that's going to kill my grass. <laughs> <laughs> imagine imagine if you will being so adult right that that came to your brain it's weird there's no reason why you should be having adult thoughts like i want uh, this is something i feel like people would get but i won't because it'll hurt my grass i don't know <laughs> <sighs> see i'm i'm the opposite opinion because my grass is basically you've seen yeah it. yeah no you i've know seen what it. it is yeah i don't care about my grass it's <laughs> it's basically just it's basically just fuel for my hoa to give me bullshit yeah, okay yeah <laughs> that's really all it is so i'm happy i just don't have an hoa yeah i wish they they, yeah. they sent out an email about how they're gonna send a strongly worded email to the town about how the roads were bad around us i'm like yeah. the roads are bad around everyone yeah have they, like are they not from upstate probably some of them aren't there are no good roads i uh i saw like a few different teslas just in kingston the other day i was like does your insurance company know that you're in kingston <laughs> like, in Kingston, this is a mistake <laughs> <laughs> the 
so you're you froze and your yeah. face was like this brandon it was like <laughs> oh perfect because because you were mid you were mid does your insurance company know you're in kit <laughs> yeah no it's a, it's a mistake to drive anything nice through kingston just ever yeah it's a mistake to have anything nice that goes outside mm-hmm. in upstate new york at yeah. any point in the year <laughs> just as a rule <laughs> yeah. it's just not a good thing no if you're if you're north of westchester you might as well not even bother just don't even think about it <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a fact because mm-hmm. because <laughs> The salt alone will destroy you. Yeah, the salt's bad, too. I think they're trying to cut back on it because it's not, like, good for anything or anyone. Yeah, they've been... I think they've been switching over to sand a lot more. Yeah. So. Lots of sand. No, no, it's something about they, they're trying to stop it. I think they're incorporating wood into it now, too. Oh, are I they? Don't know. Like, like, dust, not, like, chips. Just to just to kind of, like, add a little bit more... Yeah. Gripping well, bits. Well, I think it, it might be, like... Maybe it's a little bit darker, so it attracts the sun to it. I don't know. It was a while back when I read that. Oh, that might work. That actually is. That's actually pretty clever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's also why they they started making um, red uh, roads because it makes uh, it less hot because the sun's not being attracted to just the blacktop everywhere. Red roads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when I was in uh, when I used to work or do work out in Pennsylvania, there were roads <laughs> that were red. And the purpose was that it reduced the amount of like ambient heat in the area. Mm-hmm. So, so I don't know. So it was just nicer. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Cause it, there's like, you know, if there wasn't so, like, so th- imagine the percentage of the area around you that is just black and that yeah. gets hot. So if that just wasn't there, it would be noticeably cooler. That's true. Yeah, that is yeah, true. Yeah. So it makes, that does make more sense out west for sure yeah i wouldn't call huh. pennsylvania out west pennsylvania's out west the that's you know that's where Those... the oregon trail took place yeah it is it yeah. is it is but it was a weird oregon trail for the people who uh uh what was it it was basically uh what was the name of that movie wagons east i i never saw that was it just a bunch of yeah. yinzers it, no it so i'm pretty sure it was a um Wagons East is an American comedy film directed by Peter Markle, starring John Candy and Richard Lewis. Okay. Um, basically, the idea was a bunch of people who are West were tired of the West. Okay. So they wanted to go back East. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Good idea, I suppose. Uh, it had, what's his name? The guy who played Dr. Cox was in it. Um, oh, okay. I know, I know who you're talking about. John C. McGinley. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure. One second. Uh, th- there was a whole subplot with him. Oh yeah, he's mm-hmm. he's he's homosexual. Okay. It. And it's actually real good. Yeah. The whole movie's real. Is good. a good movie. I've seen it. Okay. I've seen it a number of times on uh, Comedy Central. So oh, I've never. You have. I never act. Not anymore. Okay. I'm talking about back in back when I lived with my parents. Back in the before times. Back in the before times. <laughs> um, no, no, but of course it has it does struggle with the problem of all movies that I've seen on Comedy Central, mm-hmm. and that is I've never seen it beginning to end. Oh yeah, well, that's all. I've of them. seen I've seen every part of it, mm-hmm. but I've never seen it beginning to end. That's why you've got to get them on DVD though. That is true. Yeah, like like. The no, but for for real, the number of com- movies that have shown up on Comedy Central that I've never seen the entirety of, yeah, is, is all just of wild. Them. It's like, just all of them. Yeah, you never watch uh, like, it all the way through. Like, let's go to prison. I watched all of that. I also watched all yeah. of Soul Plane. I have that on DVD. You have Soul Plane on DVD? Of course, I have Soul Plane on DVD. What? Yeah, who am I <laughs> don't even about? act surprised. I I, I I can't. I literally can't. <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is like you being surprised about me buying Leo Com. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have no I have moral no moral footing on this. Yeah. <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, okay. So should we, I I think we're, we're about at the point where we say um welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. 
I'm John. I don't know, All right, man. Give me the give me these guesses. All right. I think so so this one, well, I'll I'll just go through it. Um our cryptid of the week is best described as a flying humanoid. It lives humanoid. in the United States. It is said to be seen around natural disasters, and Walk it has man. been seen as recently, um, relative to my usual topics, uh, uh, as recent as 2009. So you're guessing Mothman? Oh, wait, 2009. 2009 is, is well, as recent as, so that's just one of the more recent ones I could find. Well, Don't but be recent... Googling. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm, I'm looking up my, my guess real quick. Okay. Because cause I could have sworn that there were sightings of him recently, so maybe Mothman's not the right answer. Or are you thinking yeah, Chicago Mothman? Yeah. It, should I should I not be thinking of Chicago Mothman? Don't think about Chicago sh- Mothman. That, that's just a different Mothman. Okay, so then I'm going to say Mothman because Chicago Mothman was 2016. Okay. So. No, no. So it's even better because we're going to be talking about the infamous Bat Squatch. <gasps> you actually got enough information about a bat squatch to do an episode i got some would say almost too much information about bat squatch and what yeah no it's good what i i i worked so hard trying to find an episode for bat squatch but i couldn't figure it out okay i couldn't crack it okay i couldn't crack the nut Uh, oh, oh, I'm very excited. This is something oh, I've been waiting be. for. I've, I've been waiting for this. This is uh-huh. this is something I've wanted to know more about. Yeah. Ever since I found out about it while doing a random search through... Uh, uh, like Cryptid Wiki or, or Paranormal or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'm happy you're excited. Okay. I'm very excited. This is the most excited <laughs> I've ever been for a cryptid. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Okay. So on May, yeah. May 18th, 1980... Washington, USA. Mount St. Helens experienced a major volcanic eruption that unleashed the destruction, uh, on, like just ri- a catastrophic sale. Like it was ridiculous. It flattened oh, yeah. vast swaths of trees and buildings over an area of over 230 miles, spewing massive amounts of ash and 1.5 million metric tons of sulfur, di- sulfur dioxide into the air, and creating the largest debris avalanche ever recorded. The eruption was so explosive. Uh, that it completely obliterated the top of the mountain, shaving over 1,314 meters. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. no, it was big. Uh, it's it's the single most destructive volcanic eruption in the United States history. And this is the moment that the sightings of Bat Squatch, Bat Squatch oh. start. So Bat Squatch is Rodan. Bat Squatch is Rodan. <sighs> oh. Yeah. Oh, birth from the the volcanic fire. Oh, I guess there's no fire. It's just a this is this is more of a gas eruption. Yeah, well, yeah no, but yeah, still. Mm-hmm. Oh, also want to be anxious about something? Sure. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Oh, it's like it way overdue. Erupt, if it were to erupt, it would be a billion times worse than this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like <laughs> we're talking, we're talking about uh, the. The Midwest would basically just be a new place for oceans to rise into. Yeah. No, it'd just it'd it just would just go, go away. It would just go away. Yeah, yeah. It would just be gone. Uh-huh. <laughs> so now we're going to jump forward a bit, 14 years to 1994, mm-hmm. where there was a man named Brian Canfield who was driving along a remote stretch of road through the dark wilderness on his way to the isolated Camp 1. I don't know what Camp okay. 1 is. It's located so like near mount it's rainier. located near mount rainier i mean yeah. i could have that's camp one the only camp you need to improve your game i have the feeling that's not it no probably not so Wait, it's, it's what's located this? What's this? in the foothills 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 uh of mount rainier near lake cap cap kapaus 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 when uh his vehicle abruptly and un- unexpectedly stopped in its tracks uh, considering that the pickup truck was in perfect working condition at the time and he had not stepped on the brakes, he was confused and he was at a loss as to what, just what the fuck was going on. Okay. And he had, so yeah, I looked up, I know this is not related, um, yeah. but I looked it up. I did find a camp one road and it's near, uh, it's near electron, which apparently is a place. Okay. Just call it electron, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So how about that? Yeah, Electron. I think it's like a... Is that a town? 
There better be electric Pokemon there in Pokemon Go. Uh, it's an unincorporated community in Pierce County in the state of Washington. Okay, okay. that's always fun. Unincorporated c- communities are never horrifying. <laughs> Sorry, continue. So it's now we good. know. We, now we know where where this man is. We know where he's at. His car just stops, uh, which would be scary to me. Right? Not gonna lie. Oh if, yeah. If, if 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 I if my car stopped near Onion Town, I would be terrified. <laughs> that would be the scariest shit ever. Okay, so it seemed like he like he tried a whole bunch of times to restart his truck, and it just would not start. Um, okay. And uh, so, and he's just in the middle of nowhere with only his like it wasn't. I was gonna say high beams. No, I don't know if it's high beams, but his headlights were on because it's dark as shit. Yeah, but that's when Brian saw something. A hero, <laughs> a hero we don't deserve. <laughs> no, he saw something. But a in the hero sky. we need. Who's that? Bat Squatch. Bat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he saw something in the sky. That's I'm sure that's exactly what it sounds like. That's the bat squatch call. Yeah. So <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get that like little bit of like in there. Uh, okay. It's part of their voice. It's incredibly attracted to female bat squatch. It is so. It's their mating call. <laughs> They're always doing their mating call. It's their careless whisper. Ha <laughs> 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 So as it came closer, so it's in the sky flying towards him, and what he saw was a humanoid um, that he estimated to be about nine feet tall, uh, and, and it was flying around his truck. And as it came closer, he could see that it was covered in fur with an elongated snout, uh, like, better to eat you with teeth and bird, uh, like, big-ass bird talons. Um, and he also noticed that it had red glowing eyes. Again, this just keeps coming up, and I don't know why. And the well, creature landed... Okay. Not far from his vehicle. So, the, I, yeah, this sounds like somebody's furry OC. Like their yeah. character, like their 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 species. Like, I'm a wolf eagle. Yeah. <laughs> and my my eyes are glowing red, and we're nine feet tall. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool, though. It does. This feels like it a does. dope Halloween costume. Like, if you had stilts, you could wander around. But if it was, like, scary, if it was, like, the scary kind. Okay, yeah, yeah. If it was the scary kind, yes. But if it's yeah. the, the fursuit kind, it, no. Something about fursuits always makes it look... I'm not gonna. I'm not knocking on people for, for liking it. Mm-hmm. But, like, it always takes it and puts it cartoonish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like... And that's that's not a statement of me saying, like, you know, mm-hmm. oh, I'm not trying to keep shame or anything like that. Yeah. But... It does look cartoonish, and if you're trying to be badass, mm. it's really difficult for you yeah. to take it seriously. <laughs> no, I get it. A hundred percent. That's I don't, that's like someone from Maple Story. Like, you can't insert someone from Maple Story into Game of Thrones and make it seem badass. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. You can't you can't role-play in Maple Story and have me be able to take you seriously. Yeah. Just like, because the all. character the character is so bubbly yeah. drawn. <laughs> Even when they try to look like like dark and evil it's yeah. like oh that's just that's just mickey mouse yeah. <laughs> oh, so brian said quote it was standing there staring at me like it was resting like it didn't know what to think i was scared it raised the hair on me i didn't feel threatened i just felt out of place what? wait 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 okay if a nine foot tall anything was near me i would feel threatened yeah oh yeah (laughs) like i'm sorry even if it was like actually especially if it was like spindling right yeah i'd be threatened Mm -hmm. i i I, okay 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 going (laughs) (sighs) it just felt out of place it was looking right at me like in a deep stare like like right through me like careless whisper careless whisper oh no no careless 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 whisper is what he's experiencing right now. oh yeah it's standing perfectly still it stood for hyphen how long a few minutes several minutes then its fingers twitched and its wings began to unfold 
Those wings were as wide as the road. It turned its head and looked back at me and just started flapping its wings. So, like, it turned its back to him and looked over its shoulder all sassy and flexed its uh-huh. wings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, this bat squatch was, was coming on to him. There's, oh, yeah. There's no doubt about that. This was a flirt. Oh, yeah. This was a flirty bat, bat squatch. <laughs> and a few minutes later, the truck just started, uh, and he took off as fast as he could. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I mean, the here's the thing. That bat squash wanted you to follow him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why the car started up. No, it, it wanted to be followed. It wanted to be followed. Oh, that yeah. was not a bat squash trying to escape. I bet you it was going as slow as it could down the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. He gonna get me. <laughs> uh, let's see. This account was picked up by uh, some eager journalists and freelancers who were eager to sell a story, and it was quickly dubbed Bat Squash. So that's where I, the term Bat Squash I, first comes I want to meet the person who came up with that name and shake yeah. their hand because they're a good person. Okay. They're good people. They're yeah. good people. They've, okay. they've done something phenomenal. They've introduced a new thing to the, the public zeitgeist yeah. that fills me with joy every time I see the word. <laughs> Just pure, unadulterated joy is what yeah. I get. Yeah. <laughs> so by all accounts, uh, Canfield was just like a normal, well-adjusted individual who did not do drugs or drink. Um, I doubt both, as most people have done either one, either, or both. But I'll take their word for it. Well, I mean, they could technically be me. They could. I, but I think right. I'm like... I'm a I'm an outlier. You know, I'd say like you you're, you're, you you have a data point that's outside of that linear uh-huh. path that, that that the majority of the the points are fall upon. If that makes sense, I think that makes sense. I mean, you just just you just literally described the definition of an outlier. Yeah, that's true. So <laughs> you can't you can't use outliers to define uh, the behavior of the general crowd. Yeah, because because quite frankly. It's a miracle yeah. that I have done, survived. <laughs> uh, I forget. So I'm reading what he wrote. I'm sure it made sense to me at the time. It definitely, it definitely but looks it, like something that Brandon. It made sense to Brandon at the time. It made sense to Brandon at the time, but Brandon at the time now is like, I don't think I, I worded these sentences in a way that are easy to read. This Brandon, you are. Let's see. Okay, so you start the, you start the opening brace here. Oh, yeah, no, there's, okay, like, multiple then, parentheses that are... <laughs> then, then you go deeper into the parentheses. Yeah. Um, I don't think you ever come out of the first parentheses, so I'm assuming that the rest of the story is a parenthetical. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fair. Well, so if I'm trying to remember past Brandon, this is going to be great for everyone who can't see the Word document. This is the opening parentheses, this is the closing parentheses, and then these doubles yep. are pre- a, a, a double parenthetical within the first one. Well, but then then it gets better because there's still open parentheses up here. Oh we're, yeah. We're, we're 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 dissecting Brandon for the past writing style. Yeah. Brandon, I'm going to I'm trying to help you get the I'm trying to help you. Get I wrote an this. A. This is Brandon from six weeks ago. <laughs> I can't believe that. I forgot that you wrote this six weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I've had a, a nice little cluster of uh, uh, things that I banged out pretty in a, in a reasonable uh, fashion. Um, You're a different human from the time that this was written. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Later, a local liquor, liquor store owner and avid mountaineer and amateur pilot named Butch Whitaker claimed he got that... Your, he, he's got his... Uh, oh, what's that phrase? Uh, fingering a lot of pots? Oh, yeah. He's yeah. fingering a lot of pots. A lot of them. Yeah. But you see, the thing is, the problem. the problem is... We're talking, we're talking Beauty and the Beast pot, so yeah. Um, it's a little bit not. Oh, okay. oh, hold yeah. up! No, I was slow on that one. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was slow yeah, no, on that no. one. Oh boy, and it's not good. It's uh. not good. <laughs> it's not good. Doesn't say anything about his his level of uh consent on all that. It's not good. No. <laughs> uh, so he he claimed that he was flying his plane over Mount Rainier. Uh, during midday when an enormous winged humanoid creature flew up next to him and kept pace for several minutes before flying out of sight. 
so this just continues my theory that that bat squad really really was interested in uh what's his name um brian uh not interested in this guy okay <laughs> not interested in this guy because otherwise he would have cut the power to his thing you know he took a few minutes because he wanted to he wanted to make sure he had a good feel for him and then he was like yeah nah. no nah. nah, this is not my type okay goodbye <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's like in, in in movies where like there's two convertibles and there's a convertible that's all girls and convertible that's all guys like in the movie rat race i think it was and then the, like yeah. one starts pacing the other one and, they, and so that's what bad squash is doing to this guy i dig it yeah no no bat squash yeah. is pacing the, the plane to yeah. try and get a vibe on it although bat squash might have been what if bat squash was into the plane and then realized it was being piloted by oh. a human? and and was still a little bit upset about being spurned by the human yeah before, like the night before maybe that's the whole situation okay that's that's the theory that i'm working on right now uh, i'm working on i'm working operating under the agretzko worldview where all animals have human personalities yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a wayne gretzko that kind of happens in the most recent season, but that's a whole okay. thing. So there have been reports of other bat squash as well. Such a report from 1998 uh, in which a waitress claims to have been uh, seen a logging truck actually hit one of the creatures along an isolated mountain road. The truck had been barreling along uh, only to suddenly make, to make contact with something in the road, which the waitress first took to be a tree stump or a log that was just in the road. And then when the vehicle teetered over the edge and slid down the sharp drop of the steep rocky mountainside, the shocked witness reportedly ran to go and try to help the occupant. What? <laughs> yeah. So, so the, she, but a truck hit something, rolled off the mountain, and then they go to help them. And what they saw was not a log, but rather an enormous winged humanoid that seemed to be none the worse for wear. After the thunderous impact. Okay, okay. I want to stop. Indestructible bad squash. Continue. Sorry for cutting you off. But, but that's not how physics works. Are you sure? Well, okay, okay. A logging truck, right? Yeah. Let's now. Even if, even if it's not, it, it's not uh, under full load. Yeah. Right. So we'll assume that it's not under full load. That's at least a flat book bed pickup truck, right? Like a yeah. big old, let's say a Mack truck. Let's uh -huh. use the weight of a Mack truck, uh -huh. right? Because that's probably about how much this thing weighed. Yeah. So I'm going to pull up a random Mack truck. Oh, God. Truck. I, know what we're, I know what's going on. I'm doing math. I'm doing I'm doing math, okay? Um, fuck, why can't I find the weight of a Mack truck? Mack, you're killing me. All right, let's say it's... So, so a, a F-150 is what, two tons? We'll go with that. That doesn't sound like it'd right? be too far off. I'm, I'm not sure what the real answer is. Sh let's, let's say two tons because that's the bo that's bare bones. Yeah. Right? So, two tons. The bat squash would have to be, and it's going 65 miles an hour mm -hmm. for the sake of argument. Yeah. The bat squash would have to be... Well, they said barreling, mass. so they got 65. Yeah. The, the bat squash would have to be absolutely massive maybe like, it's just we're dense talking... but but okay okay good good okay. footing feet shoulder width apart it was in that good pose but brandon in a good truck brandon, stop and pose brandon an yeah. a african elephant right yeah an african elephant is three percent of its body weight that's not helpful <laughs> uh 10 tons okay right? that thing can't fly even if you hit – so so it has to be – the amount of force that's coming towards it, just for the sake of argument, is like uh, – we're going to have to multiply that by, by at least 60, right? Or yeah. Two. So we're, we're talking about it, – it's going to have to have like at least, you know, at least 20 tons. Yeah. Right? Like if it's – if it's not even going to become close – it's not even going to be close otherwise. Mm-hmm. It's a bat that's standing. How is it going to be able to get the, the vertical uh, lift to take off and seduce men in cars? Yeah. Well, the, the, the real – well, one, it could grip it by the husk. 
Okay, yes, yes. Okay. I did forget about that. I did forget yeah. about the Griffin Metal Husk. Yeah. Well, is it an African or a European bat squash? Uh, I think we're probably talking about a European bat squash, which uh, actually negates the situation in that case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I, sorry, I, I had a whole... I thought I had a whole thing, but I completely wasted my time. <laughs> we didn't properly assign taxonomies. So. Yeah. yeah, it's all good. So th- the witness... <laughs> What is reported? <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good picture. <laughs> the creature stood about 15 feet high when it was sitting. Well, okay. So here, what? let's dissect that first almost full sentence. It stood 15 feet high when it was sitting, okay. hunched over in front of me. Yeah, that's a that's okay. Yeah, I later that discovered that sentence has so much wrong with it. So much wrong with it. Just so much wrong with it. I later discovered that this creature would measure an easy 30 feet from head to bottom once it was airborne. Okay, okay, wait. So there's two things. One, later discovered? Yeah. Two, the rock the, the rock climbing wall behind the middle school at our middle school. Yeah. That was a 20 foot tall rock climbing wall. Yeah. This has got 10 feet on that. Yeah. Brandon, this this would practically be the the fucking forest god from Princess Mononoke I'm also in terms of height. pretty sure that that's not how sitting works, because when I sit down, I'm not all of a sudden three feet tall. Or, no, no, sorry, sorry, no, no, that's not how that works. I'm not all of a sudden, like, one and a half feet tall. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> like, this is not how sitting even works. The head no. of this animal was unusually small compared to its massive body with beady purple eyes that would remind me <laughs> would remind anyone who has the misfortune of seeing them right beady, that, wait wait the okay. beady purple I, eyes would remind anyone who had the misfortune of seeing them and not remind them of anything in particular you are correct in saying that does not read properly because that does that, not read properly but like beady eyes i usually forget about beady eyes yeah it's the big ones. Uh, oh. Big as a doll's eyes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Believe that this creature could not be of the Raton family. Um, Raton? I tried looking that up. I'm not sure that's a thing. R-E-T-O-N. What? Yeah. Of the Raton family? Yeah, Maybe... I, that's not a thing. Okay, I'm pretty so sure. Brandon, yeah. what if... Oh my god. Now, I might be wrong, but what if this person was trying to sound as though they knew scientific names? Oh, I wouldn't put it past them. And they said Rattan because they were trying to say rat family. Uh... (laughs) Brandon. I would not put that past them. Brandon, what if? What if this person was trying to say it was not yeah. a part of the rat family, uh-huh. but then they were trying to sound more intelligent, so they said Raton, uh-huh. even though they didn't know the scientific name? <laughs> what if? <laughs> Is that what happened? I don't uh, know. It's entirely possible. I. Oh my god. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could have seen, amazing. like, I wish there was a recording of this interview. There isn't. It's only just whatever was written in the paper. But Brandon, I continue to read, and it's it's more. It's okay. more likely. Don't you let me read for you. That's how read for podcasts me. Read for me. <laughs> read for me. Read for me. Read for me, because I need to talk yeah. about this. Well, other characteristics of the head also had many features of the Raton family. <laughs> Being of noteworthy comment is the long pointed ears from which protruded from the top of the creature's head. The nose rat was ears. rather small. Yeah, rat ears. The nose was rather rat small. Ears. The most pronounced feature of the nose being the unusual color of purple. I believe that this is the only creature in the world to have a purple nose. I strongly doubt that. The wingspan of the creature looked very small as it couldn't fly with such a small wing surface. However, I later learned once that the creature was airborne that the wings extended to, out to form a wingspan of a good 40 feet. The most disturbing feature of this large beast was its hands. It, had, it appeared to have four sets 
uh, four sets of them. Sorry. <laughs> oh, shit. Perhaps I should clarify that to mean that it had two sets of claws slash hands on the wings uh, about Wait. midway to either side of the torso, almost as if they were human. Um, I didn't notice the hands were near the torso until another encounter with a large animal the next day. The creature okay. was very frightening to look at and could Branded. almost... Yeah? You want me to stop? <laughs> You're, yeah, a little bit. You, you just laid down so much on I me. laid so, down okay. a lot. Okay, so first of all, the wingspan, even if it was a good 40 feet, still not enough surface area for a 20 foot long, a 30 foot tall creature. Full yeah. stop. We've gone over this in the, the Ropen episode, so I'm not going to go over this again. Uh-huh. But, because I did do a whole huge dissertation on how wing, wing surface area works vis-a-vis -vis animals, so yeah. we'll, we'll leave that out. <laughs> but, but, more importantly, uh, let's see, ch -ch -ch -ch. The fact that it has hands is not the most disturbing fact of the creature. No. Every it's little purple nose. It's actually from from the list of things that they've described, the fact that it has uh hands and it's a humanoid is the least the least yeah. surprising thing about it. How about the <laughs> wings? How about the teeth? Oh yeah. Oh, you mean like the giant 40-foot wings and the big ferocious teeth? Yeah. Yeah, that that's more frightening to me than the hands. Yes. Not gonna oh, lie. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, uh, uh. the creature was very frightening to look at. It could almost be crossed between a large bat and an excessively large furry human. I believe that the most accurate description would be that given some of the local townsfolk whom later had the misfortune of encountering the beast, naming it B B Bat Squatch. Um That that red. Yeah, no, that's listen, reading is hard sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like what you're what you say next. It's okay. Fun. Personally, I think this account is a load of guano, as Raton isn't a thing and it <laughs> heavily includes previous knowledge of the creature while at the same time specifically adding bat like characteristics. Uh, and I I'm almost hundred percent sure Raton is just that person's idea of Latin for rat. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like a hundred percent. I think this is either a full blown lie or someone who is who is contaminated with the Bat Squatch story who added some supporting details because they consciously or subconsciously wanted to per perpetuate this phenomena. And it doesn't help that this was a post from a, a Bat Squatch web forum. Now people can't lie on the internet, Brandon. People can't lie on the internet. We That's all know it. Fact. It's required. It's like taking an oath of office. We can't lie ever. I, I haven't lied, like, probably five times this episode. <laughs> oh. However, the Batch Squatch settings are not limited to the state of Washington. In 2009, a group of hikers were on Mount Shasta, located <laughs> in the far north of California, <laughs> were awestruck when they saw a bat-like humanoid come forth from the cave near their trek. See, it's it's a sister mountain to uh, Mount Fago. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and you've got the 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 hordes of Juggalo that roam the plains between yeah. them. <laughs> uh, the hikers say that me and my friend were hiking around Mount Shasta, and out of one of the crevices flew this big bat creature. I mean, this it was a huge thing. It was as tall as a man, as stocky as Hulk Hogan, and what? had leathery Wait. wings. Yeah, wait, no, wait. they're why referencing is Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Why is it's 2009? Why is Hulk Hogan your ref, your reference? I don't know. Why wouldn't it be uh why wouldn't it be Dwayne Johnson? Why wouldn't it be Vin Diesel? Why wouldn't it be oh, there's so many good options. Jake the Snake? Why not Jake the Snake? Well, why He's not wrestler? like Mankind? Why not Booker T? Mankind, not, not why not John Cena? Yeah. Although they saw him, so he's not John Cena. Mm -hmm. That that was the other bat squatch that yeah. came out of the cabin that they didn't see. That was the yeah. John Cena bat squatch. <laughs> Why not Macho Man Randy Savage? Well, Ra Macho Man Randy Savage. Well, wait, no, he died in 2012. So. Oh, okay. He might still. I think he died 2012. I'm saying There's, that. I don't but, know what. Uh, all I know is be. he died when there was supposed to be an apocalypse, like June 20th, I think, or something like that. Yeah. And then there was like a bunch of jokes about how he went to heaven and like body slammed God. 
yeah. <laughs> to prevent the apocalypse, which uh-huh. I'll believe that. I mean, the cream rises to the top, man. The, I'm not even going to do the impression. I'm not even going to do the impression. It rises to the top. It does rise to the top. That dude, that dude, that dude had such a stage presence. He uh-huh. knew he knew how to be a wrestler. Oh, he I knew it was say. up. Also, Slim Jim's still delicious. Bam! Snap into a Slim Jim. Yeah. So bad for me. But they were I, so I, good. I, I went well, here's a story. I was uh I went to my parents' house for Father's Day, I think. Yeah. That's the reason I went. Yeah, it was Father's Day. Yeah. Um and I got a Slim Jim. Yeah. Because my nephew was had Slim Jims. Uh-huh. And he handed me a box of Slim Jims, so I did the uncle tax and I took one of the Slim Jims. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just as good as I remember. <laughs> but it was also just as bad as I remember too. We went down to the harbor for uh Father's Day. And they're yeah. giving all the fathers uh, free shirts. Mm-hmm. And I walk in. John, I got a free shirt. Brandon. They thought I was a daddy. Brandon. No. They thought I was a daddy. Brandon. How did that make you feel? Well, it made me feel like I got a free shirt. So that was something. Oh, okay. And then, so there is. So yesterday, <laughs> like we're in walking around the uh, 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 um, stockade district. We're like, yeah. oh, there's some music. Let's let's go check it out. And they're like, well, the, it was like a youth thing. And we're like, you can probably get in, right? Uh-huh. Got stopped at the door. They're like, you ain't youths. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? See, I have that baby face I'm going old. on. I got turned away for being old. They thought that's, I was a dad and I got turned away for being old, John. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon. It's a crisis. It's happening. It's, it's happening. happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's... You have to, you have to deal with that. <laughs> Brandon, you gotta buy a, you gotta buy a, a really nice car now, because that's you're at that point. You've hit that point. There's... You gotta buy like a, like a sports car to make you feel less old. But by definition, that makes you feel more old because I converted I don't know my of... house to all clean energy so I can get a fancy electric vehicle, but not feel bad about the electricity still being made from coal plants. So I can get like a fancy ass, like sporty electric car in the future. I wish I could get it. I wish I could afford a, a fancy sporty. Oh, no. We're in the same boat. I'm just being an optimist. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I'll still drive. I'd still drive around and go, that's my next house. I know I'm not going to get another house anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you got to be you got to be an incurable optimist. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. Here's the problem. I'm not. <laughs> I'm an incurable pessimist. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. No, I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> no, I, I, I operate from the worst the worst set of circumstances first. Yeah. So then I'm always impri- I'm always surprised when things go well. Yeah. But I'm never surprised when things go poorly. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I forgot where I was. Okay. So I believe the wingspan was at least 50 feet from one end to the other. I was holding up my camera but was paralyzed with fear as this thing flew by. I didn't get a picture. Sorry. They were holding the camera and didn't get a picture. I don't understand. Okay. So this is 2009. That means they're not, they don't have a cell phone camera, right? That is means it? they have probably, yeah, cell phone cameras weren't really huge. No? 2009 was when the iPhone was first starting to get adopted because that's when I got my, so 2009 was when we graduated high school, Brandon. Is that one? Oh shit! You're right. We're class of '09, aren't we? Yeah. So no cell so phones had cameras in 2009. They did, but okay. They what weren't was like the main... great. No, they weren't great, and most people who were taking pictures weren't using a cell phone camera. Yeah. Well, the main they had thing like about... a DSLR or something yeah. like that. The thing about cell phones then was basically like, look, you can make phone calls, and it'll play all your music. You can throw away your MP3 players. It wasn't even there yet. Yeah. No, oh. it wasn't until the iPhone came out that that really yeah. happened. Because okay. remember, remember back then, the pinnacle of, of cell phone was still the, the Razor. Fuck, yeah, dude. I had and that thing, several Razors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, uh, so because I was John, mm-hmm. I had a Samsung Blackjack 2. Now, yeah. if you've never heard of the Samsung Blackjack 2, there's a reason you've never heard 
of uh. the Samsung Blackjack 2 because very few people had one. It wasn't expensive. Yeah. It's just I didn't want a BlackBerry. Well, you know what? I, I had it was it's still my favorite phone. The uh, it was the alias is the one where you could it was a fold phone. But could I remember that in both directions. And I was like, this is the best shit ever. I remember that. I remember that phone. Yeah. No, it was. I think you good. were like one of the only people. who had one. Yeah. No, I was the only person I knew that had one. And I was like, this is the coolest shit. Because you could it was like it was a phone where like everyone had flip phones to talk, but you could actually like text with it for real. You can get one for eight bucks for eight bucks. OK, it's eight dollars. And oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, I'm pa- I'm pasting this into the, the show notes after the Shasta section. Okay. Brandon, next page. Look at what the look at what the, the song that's playing on that, that alias is. The song on I can't read it. What's it say? It's Fallout Boy. It's the the John, it's the, the John, sheep one. The huh? Sh- the, John, 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 that's on my driving playlist. That Fallout Boy album? No, specifically only that song. Only that song. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, this song that just this is out of my Sugar, cell we're phone. We're going down. Yeah, this is just on my cell phone right now. The, John, I just badly scream this out the window at people in Kingston, just all the time. <laughs> like it's great. Like that's. <laughs> I have the weirdest driving place. I've got okay here, and I'll, we'll get back on topic. I promise. No, but we're not. I have to. I have to share with you um, some of the artists on my driving playlist. Um, d- just a few. I'm just scrolling through and uh, some Audio Slave, Billie okay. Eilish, Fallout Boy, Frank Sinatra, Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes, Go Go Bordello, Slipknot, uh, T Pain, Yeezer. Like just post Malone, just Brandon. a crazy, just a crazy disjointed mix. It's just stuff when it comes on. I go, oh shit, and just yell it out the window at people. God damn it! Most of my most of my driving playlists. Well, I have a playlist on Spotify. Yeah, it's literally right now. It's fifty songs. I've been adding to it because I just recently started. I don't have it. a Spotify, huh? I don't have Spotify. I do. Okay. Because I don't have to pay for music now. I just pay for a monthly fee. Yeah. Um, and torrents aren't really a thing anymore. Uh, well, just so my, you know, you can't, we can use our recording software to just sort of get stuff. That's true, but that's, that's questionable. <laughs> you set it to, to a soppy loopback and then you can just record system settings. <laughs> but mine's mostly proto man. I believe it. A hundred percent. I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> So, t- jumping back into the middle of a paragraph, what do you Brandon, think this could be? What, yeah? What, what do you think? What do you think? Who do you think I am? A person who had a week where they were able to rest? <laughs> could it have been a pterodactyl? No. <laughs> it was flying or gliding fast. It seemed to have been, or have had, the head of a bat. Thinking about it, it doesn't have the head of a pterodactyl. I just saw a picture of a pterodactyl, and the heads are not similar. So where do they see a picture themselves. of themselves? I don't know. Where do they, where do they see a picture they're... of a pterodactyl? Because yeah, I've never seen a photo of a pterodactyl unless they're talking about like a and like a rendering. book, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would think it had the head of a bat or maybe more like a fox. The damn thing finally flew into a clump of trees and vanished. I heard you guys might be out back. <laughs> sorry, might be going back to Mount Shasta. If you do, please look for this thing. Okay. So they're just Make telling sure... people to, to try to look for stuff. I, maybe 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 they need just like a case of of cola yeah yeah uh some similar reports were made prior to the mount st helens eruption in texas during the 1970s in january i'm just bad at words in january of 1976 there was a separate uh sighting over the span of two weeks uh such is the case of the brothers david and john Doubt, I believe that's how you say it, Dot, D-A-U-T, mm-hmm. uh, who are driving along a, a rural road in Rio Grande Valley when a bat-winged humanoid uh, w- re- with the head reminiscent... <sighs> I'm so bad at words. With a head reminiscent of that of a wolf. 
uh, and estimated to be about eight to ten feet tall, landed in front of them, forcing them to uh, forcing them to a screeching halt uh, as they tried. So I'm before just bad you go on, please interrupt yeah, me. I'm just yeah, bad at so, words. So it's Rio Grande. Not Rio Grande. I, I think I just saw too many like old westerns. Uh, yeah, it's Rio Grande. Yes, yeah. but Grandy's like you're you're pronouncing every word louder. <laughs> the old Rio Grande. I I mean, a valet, valley, a valet, 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 yeah. valu. Um, <laughs> is this one of those situations where someone's like taking a previous sighting and being like, "Oh, this is the thing that we're talking about right now." Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <That's why. laughs> that's that's real, fair. I don't know. Uh, they they tried to back up from the nightmare's creature, but it loped forward as if it was about to attack, only to take flight into the air over them with an audible whooshing of its wings. That's them not understanding the joke. Yeah. <laughs> the bat the bat squatch was like, thought I was gonna attack you, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Whoosh. <laughs> and another... You just didn't get that joke. <laughs> in another case, a father and son claimed to have been out hunting deer in Hidalgo country near Houston. When the creature... We all know they were hunting men. The most dangerous game. Yeah. When the creature had swooped down to grab the father and carry him off with... Wha yeah. <laughs> What? Wait, wait. Okay. So he swooped down to grab the father and carry him off. Brandon. He swooped Brandon, down to grab the father. I feel like to carry him off. I feel like this would have been national news. Uh huh. With the mo with the man only barely managing to escape. See, you're one sentence, and then you would have learned that's th there's why it wasn't news. It still would have been news. I don't know. Uh, managed to escape when the son shot at it with a rifle. The man was apparently left shaken with broken ribs and deep talon marks along his body. All things told, there were a total of 10 people who claimed to have seen the creature, including two police officers. Of course, it's, they always had to bring in police officers to sightings because police officers are more trustworthy somehow. Oh, yeah. Uh, in 2011, uh, in June, a man who was given the pseudonym Phoenix Tierez was... What? Walking right, that's straight up. They got to pick their own name, so like they they realized they could give a newspaper an alias and just made it up on the spot. Oh my God, like that's a hundred percent what happened. I want to know where they came up with the name Tiraz though, because Phoenix they could have just been looking at like a map. Yeah, Tiraz is kind of wild. I don't even know what that is. I, I've never even uh, heard. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. I'm so gonna. I'm gonna. Phoenix was walking his dog when he saw something. Something. I saw something flying into the sky. It had bat wings, blue fur, and it had a face with eyes similar to glowing red. They weren't glowing red. They were similar to glowing similar red. Similar to glowing red. Got it. It was Got about it. nine feet tall at least. After I watched it, it just flew away. And okay. It, yeah. Sure. In April 2014, at Archbishop Hoban High School in Arcon, Ohio, a Spanish Akron. class had seen what they described as a Giant black mass zipped by the window of the classroom at incredible speed. They claim <laughs> it was about nine feet tall with about a 20 or 30 foot wingspan. So I'm imagining uh, some of the students trying to explain what they just saw. And the Spanish teacher was like, en espanol. <laughs> yeah. I was actually thinking about this hey, recently. John, a key, a key. Huh? <laughs> oh, I... Uh, I suck at Spanish. Yeah, no, that's the, basically all. I cleaned my car yesterday. Yeah. And I found my book of dirty Spanish. Well, that's good. Yeah. I'm also slightly horrified that your book of dirty Spanish... I want to know how long that book of dirty Spanish has been there. I'm assuming since the car was purchased. Uh, So I purchased that book probably 12 or 13 years ago. Yep. And it's just in the back of cars. It's in rough condition, but it gives I, me a solid chuckle every once in a while. I know, I know. I have I have book I had there's a CD that has lived in my car for three cars now that was placed there by Nick Dondero and has yeah. not left. <laughs> um so uh, before we keep going, yeah. I was actually just thinking about this recently. Yeah. Have you ever noticed how foreign language teachers are always like 
they always have the the language version of Mr. or Mrs. Yes. Like Senor or so and so or Senorita, yeah. blah blah blah. Like no one else does that. Like the history teacher doesn't have my lord. No one, my, no my other lord, teacher whatever. has. You, do you call Mister? Well, at least I. Or teachers were chill because they they just be like, "Hey, what's up? I'm so you know." They'd be like, "Oh, I'm going to Fern's class, or I'm going to to see Reader. I'm going to see." It's never like there weren't a lot of like honorifics that we used really. Well, it was honorifics for the people in the 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 classes that I was in. Okay, well, I, I used honorifics. <laughs> but then again, I'm John. Yeah. So I'm yeah. polite to I'm a polite to the point of it doesn't make sense. There's I use honorifics at work only because I think it's funny. So it's it's pretty good. So I'll just walk past like I'll give someone like the hair like I'll be walking, then just stop dead, whip my head to the side, give like an evil eye and be like, Mr. White, and then just keep walking. Why? <laughs> Why do you make people's lives more confusing? I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, um, <laughs> my phone's blown up. Hold on, I'm get for like four different people. I'll get to them. We're, we're also wrapping this up. I'll get to them after. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's also a citrus IPA named after Bad Squash. Rogue Brewing Company describes it as, for years... Rumors have circled the deep woods on Ma Mount St. Helens uh, lives the fabled bat squash, where there are many tales of bat squash. They're all a bit hazy on the details, which makes the truth such a juicy mystery. Oh, my so, God. What a better way to honor an elusive legend than with this hazy IPA. Perfect for camping and potentially making a new friend. This juicy, cloudy IPA features some intense tropical flavors and aromas. So they you got to be careful, though. Yeah. You got to be careful though, because you've yeah. already established that Bat Squatch is uh, is looking for a mate. Yeah, you got to be careful. You got to be careful out there, people. Especially when it's coming out of the haze, like oh, Bat Squatch, Although what then, you doing? Then again, maybe Bat Squatch should not be so aggressive looking for a mate. We should probably yeah. blame Bat, Bat Squatch, not the person who's getting drunk. Yeah, true. That that's totally honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is just unrelated, but. Um, they also did provide like a flavor profile similar to the Pokemon Beauty Contest ratings. That's all. So wait a second. I'm looking at this. Tropical is its own thing, right? Yeah. And it's got all the tropicals, which for yeah. Bat Squatch, which is in Mount St. Helens, that's weird. Yeah. Um. Second of all, the malt is one. The bitter is two. The pine is two. I feel like pine should be much larger on that. If talking, yeah, if we're talking uh, IPAs. Oh, okay, yeah. I say IPAs that they should be harder on the pine and bitter. Citrus, which I'm confused as to how that's different from tropical, but okay, is a four. What's yeah. the different, Brandon? Brandon, what's the difference between citrus and tropical? Do you know? Well, citrus would I... specifically be like a f like orange lemon or whatever. Whereas tropical, I imagine, is 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 more of a sweet to it. Okay. Where you get something that's citrusy but not necessarily sweet because, like, you take a bite of an orange, you're not, like, you're not overly, like, sweetness did, did by it, you know? <sighs> okay. I get you. Yeah. Uh, that's – all right. I, I always find flavor profiles to be a weird thing anyways, so. Yeah. <laughs> but. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> It's happening. It's I, happening. I no know we're hitting the it's plugs. The sound it's... of John yawning means it's time to close out. <laughs> Someone ring the bell so I can wake up. <laughs> um. So as always, we since we've learned, I think all we can learn about Bat Squatch at this point. Yeah. You did leave off. Someone made an action figure for Bat Squatch. Is there a Bat Squatch action figure? I did not see that. Yeah. Um. It was a custom someone made, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, it was... Wait, 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 wait. Mezco Cryptozoology Series. <laughs> it doesn't have Bat Squatch. <laughs> Anywho. Um, so, as always, if you want to get in contact with us, 
Our website is CryptopediaCast.com. On Instagram and Twitter, we're at CryptopediaCast. If you want to email us, it's CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We do have a Patreon, which is in the, the show notes. Um, at the time of recording, I started editing SCP-02. Oh, hell yeah. Um, I'm about nowhere near done with that. Uh, it's I've been sitting on that the the audio files for that literally no joke for two months now. Have you? Yes, I recorded <laughs> it immediately after recording after releasing SCP-01, but then I just never got around to editing yeah. it. Um, so that that's good. It's happening. <laughs> so that's coming for Jackalope level patrons. Yeah. Um, and also if we wanna if we wanna mention. Where jackalopes are? Mm, no, they don't deserve it. Okay, cool. I'm joking. All right. No, no, we'll get back to <laughs> uh, No, so our jackalopes are Clay Sinclair and Marty mm. Von Party. Um, also, if you join, uh, if you are a patron, you do get access to the um, the Discord. Uh-huh. And the, I, I want to point out that the Discord uh, saved the release time of episode uh, 39. Yeah. Because I totally forgot that we were re- that we were released on Mondays for whatever reason. Yeah. And if it wasn't for uh, Clay, I would not have uploaded it that day. <laughs> oh, boy. So <laughs> thanks, Clay. You saved uh-huh. us. Uh, we have a Facebook group, although I have actually been actively not posting stuff in there. And that is in part because of my disagreement with Facebook as a platform. Yeah. If you guys want me to post more in there, I'll post more in there. But I've begun to realize that there's certain systemic problems to Facebook, and I don't know if I want to support that. Mm-hmm. Um, although I'll still use their Messenger coin because it's useful. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed the podcast, uh, feel free to rate, review, subscribe on whatever platform you rate, review, all that good stuff on. Uh, mm-hmm. If you have any requests or stories. Oh, it's happening them. again. It's happening again. It happens. It happens. Um, yeah, and that's uh, that's about all I got for the, the general notes. Yeah, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com, and my Twitter is at crypto brandon. If you want to follow me, I'm at u2057 on Instagram and at jf dunham on Twitter. My website is johndunhamgames.com, and my email address is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Things are just weird. Yeah, they are very weird. When you throw a bat squatch into the mix, everything gets weird. Yeah. Yeah.